Hello, hello everybody. Welcome for this new uh, live session. We're gonna speak today about some technique and uh, we'll do some uh, question and answer. So it can go a bit uh, random. Uh, I will start first with some uh, technical point for the corner, uh, going quite uh, quick still. And uh, as soon as you have some uh, question in the chat, which is the main goal of the day, is to really uh, share some uh, question and answer. It can be in, in very different topics. Let's go uh, quite uh, random today in the different um, in the different topics. So I will start with some corner uh, advice. And then um, when I see in the chat some uh, question, we just answer this. So I have a few different points I want to explain uh, in the corner. And um, I'll go back to this. So I have four main points I want to uh, mention is the how to put the ankle position at the end of the right push during the corner. I want to speak also about the landing of the left skate, about the upper body going up out of the corner. It's a mistake of a mini skater and the orientation of the left leg uh, during the push. I can see already we have some people from India on this live. So feel free to tell your friend about and share the information about this live uh, now and uh, to ask questions when you want. So uh, first things I want to look, I want to explain about the corner is um, kind of this moment. If you look the, up video, the upper video here, I took the video from uh, one of my favorite race was in the Flanders Grand Prix in Belgium. And um, and uh, from uh, last uh, season, and uh, there was, um, I will try to add uh, some more tools. And this race was uh, the thousand meter, mainly in, um, in, uh, on the track, and there was a race, and I, I look at this skater, and especially, uh, so it's Alexis Jimenez, is from France, and I'm looking how we put his ankle here out of the um, in the push out of the corner so you can see that his skate is a bit in this direction here and then it's kind of an angle here so it's it's normal to have a little bit of this but you don't you don't want to have too much of this and i think here with this right push it's like the shoes don't give him en enough support it's so it's like the shoes He's going away from him, so then his push is is going in, in a little bit empty. It's very hard for him at this moment to apply some push. Uh, so let's go on the blender uh, scaler to show you this. So it's this part of the move. It's like it's too much like this. The angle between the ankle and the ground is too broken like this. So it's super hard. For him to apply the push, it's I, I would say it's almost impossible at this angle. So it's uh, it could come from a technical uh, movement, but most of the time it's because the shoes don't give enough support here. So you want to have a little bit of it, but really not as much as what you see uh, on the picture here. So it, it's quite a big problem for for his right push, and it's something uh, we see in many skaters. So it can happen on one leg or another, but most of the time it would happen on the right leg. And uh, it's very hard to, to create some speed when you have uh, this angle here. So it's much more required to have something more straight here. And uh, it, it makes big difference in the intensity you can put in your push actually. So really, uh, if I had to work on this technique, that the first things I will do uh, with this skater to solve this problem. Uh, this is uh, really the main point. Point number two, let me have a look exactly what it was in the same order. So the second technical uh, tip for this skater would be something about the landing of the left leg. Okay, so the landing of the left leg it's also quite difficult here. 
is landing uh, more with the um, you can see more with the hill. It's not a lot, but it's just enough to create um, to create a, a moment where I lose the push. So I try to find the right moment for him just before this. So here you see it's very little, but uh, it's not so bad. So it's a uh, it's one point. Um, alors, let's go in details for this in, with my scaler. So basically, what's happening, and the big difference is that he will he try to land uh, the skate much more in front at this moment. Okay, this is what he's trying to do. He bring it the skate uh, very much in front, and when when you do this, when you have the skate much more in front, which is a good thing, it's, the more you can get the grip in the front, the best it is, but then what happens most of the time, it ends up to land like this. So you have this little kind of uh, problem in the landing here, you don't see so much from the front, but from the side view, and if I try to go uh, very good on this axle here, you can see uh, that the foot is, is landing like this. So that's what he's doing at this moment, uh, on the pitcher and he's losing all the time that the skate is doing this movement so I'll try to reproduce this movement all the time it takes for the skater to do this it's a time that he lose for the push so it's a little bit uh, it's not a lot but every step if he do this he will lose 0, 0.0 something every step so at the end and especially when you want to go fast on a on a thousand meter, it's a, it can be quite a problem. Okay, so uh, you can still ask your question in the comment by the time I explain this, and I will go back uh, question by question at the end of this little corner explanation, which will take maybe 10-15 uh, minutes, maybe 10 minutes more. And after I will answer all the questions one by one, so feel free to ask the question uh, as soon as they come. Okay. At this moment, so he's losing the grip on the right leg, he's landing a little bit on the heel, but quite quite good still. And also what's happening is because he's losing the end of the right push, he's going quite up here with the shoulders. So also on the scaler at this moment, basically he's going quite up. I don't know if it's gonna he's going up with the body. So this movement, it's kind of an adaptation is doing this to compensate because he's losing the end of the push. So it bring, it's a, it's also a wrong movement because by pushing and going up with his body, he's losing a lot of uh, he's losing a lot of uh, power, actually. Also, I can see that at this moment, his hand, his uh, his arm is almost straight, like. It's super straight and it's going very up. So when the arm is going totally straight like this and quite up, like this uh, this uh, left arm, it helps the shoulders to go up. So it's quite difficult to, um, to solve this uh, if you keep your arm straight. I don't like to have the arm straight, uh, full extension at the end of the moment I like to keep a little, uh, so it's not perfect here, of course. Let's try to correct a bit the movement of the scaler, if I can. So you want to have always little flex movement, in my opinion, in the arm, to keep always my rotation. I need to try to get this rotation better, maybe. Yes. Um, that will help this. Okay, so I like to have always a little uh, flex in the arm like this to avoid that it goes straight and bring my shoulders up at the end of the movement. So that's quite uh, something I like to control in my arms movement. If we had a bigger movement with the um, legs, like on the eyes, we could go to a more straight extension of the arm, but in skating we don't have such a in inline skating we don't have such a, a long step push on the ground, so we don't need to go with a full extension in the arm. I think. 
so okay it's because so this arm help uh, create that it bring his shoulders up more like I say at this moment then then it's going up okay it's because of his arm movement I think and third technical point third technical point that uh, Alexi have is let's go back a little bit earlier in the video it's also in the landing of uh, his left skate you see the orientation of the skate is going more let's try to draw a line it's like the skate I don't want a square but the, it's like the square the, the skate goes kind of in this direction where it should go more into this direction so it's a little bit like he opened the skate a little too much in the landing not so bad because it helps to take outside edge but it create uh, it make his push going uh, away quite early so his push his left push is going very fast on the outside then so i think uh, if you want to have a longer pushing time he should change the direction the orientation of his skate at the landing okay so that's a few points for today to introduce a little bit this Q&A uh, video and I will start to answer the first question but I remember the things the orientation of the ankle on the right skate the orientation of the left skate at landing the we've seen a little bit quickly the landing on the heel was a problem also you should try to land more with a flat skate if possible which is quite hard when you want to land uh, more in front with your skate which is a good movement this and be careful uh, Alexi if you are looking this video be careful with your upper movement here out of the corner it makes you light on the ground and it, it you lose your push mainly in this part okay so let's go now uh, after this 15 minute uh, little explanation of the corner let's go on the first question so we have a question uh, in French au corner j'ai l'habitude de courir comme dans les sprints et je ne trouve pas ça bénéfique pour les longues distances lors d'une attaque so he's telling that when he's uh, sprinting out of the corner he's kind of jumping on his skate so that's almost uh, the same problem as what's happening here for um, for Alexi he has a still a good contact in the ground but he's kind of jumping on the skate so many skater will kind of jump on the skate out of the corner which is not so so bad and it's it's uh, it could be a good movement if it's a little jump done like many Colombians or like the Italians but um, if you jump too much like with the feeling of running of course then it become a problem so if the problem is that if you jump too much uh, when you're in the air I will try to to show it with the blender skater if it's possible here so let's say if you are jumping on your skate there is one moment uh, I will try to simulate this maybe not now but it happened very much at this moment then the skater kind of jump so he go up 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 and he almost I would say he almost don't touch the ground anymore so here yeah, my skater still touch the ground so I and if you don't touch the ground actually then does this work if you don't touch the ground you cannot push it's a very clear fact if you are not touching the ground you are not pushing so and if you are not pushing you don't create speed so if you are jumping too much out of your corner or during the corner every moment you are not in contact with the ground basically you are losing your speed so you will land and then you will have to put a lot of explosive quick power to generate some speed and it makes you run even more and even more so the only way to solve this is to take more time to slow down your movement a little bit to use more some uh, strength power than some speed power so you want to be more grounded to be able to uh, get a longer pushing time and pushing distance on the ground 
and if you jump too much when you're in the air it's like no push so uh, it's difficult also when you run most of your power that you use is, is uh, not creating speed forward but it's it's you using this power to make your body go up and so you lose a lot of your power just to go up instead of going forward so it's very difficult and it's a big uh, impact if you can solve this so try first to force yourself to move your leg a little slower to be more grounded basically uh, you always need a contact moment on the ground uh, to um, to generate speed and Alexi on this video is doing this is jumping a little bit on the shoulders but the hip don't go up too much and he's always having a moment almost on the ground very little moment where he don't touch the ground so then it's a quite efficient technique for this okay remember if you are sprinting too much with speed leg and jumping you lose contact on the ground and then you cannot push second question from Amy vlogs always uh, having question and looking at the video thank you for this on left foot is there some internal hip rotation in the left foot like the double push for the skate uh, must point forward so the question is is there some internal hip rotation on the left foot so let's go in the blender skater and we go at the landing of the left skate and let's look it from front to solve to see this so the question is i think if there is internal rotation of the hip so let's leave. so if he's doing it's not exactly this movement is meaning but it could simulate a little bit this still if you have this little bit in the corner yes you want to have this little bit actually it's a good question also but it's very fine between the internal rotation of the hip and what you're gonna do uh, with with the ankle so it's always a combination between both if you do too much internal rotation and too much of the hip and too much internal rotation on the ankle then the orientation of your skate in the corner is uh, too open then too close here but it will go away too fast so you want to find a quite some tuning between um, between this movement on the ankle here this little rotation like I show like this one and the one on the hip with something like this okay here it looks like it's the new move but I would like more to make the rotation inside the hip so if you put too much of the inside rotation of the hip plus too much of the inside rotation of the skate then your push will go very quick behind you and out and out okay so try to avoid too much of this i don't recommend too much of but i also don't recommend uh, to land uh, open like this you know it's not my favorite maybe for some skater it could be good but i don't like too much of especially on the ankle here orientation of the skate like this for me it's like it's a problem so for me i recommend more straight at this moment especially from the ankle okay uh, so it's similar to the double push actually it's very close moment if you look at this uh, this view here uh, it's very similar to what we are doing when we double push like remember that this moment here when you're pushing with the left leg during your cross it's almost the same movement as the inside push from a from the glutes uh, with uh, the double push and this movement is almost the same so if you are able to do this movement in corner you are also able to do it in straight line during the double push so i think this question is linked to this part of the movement and when you're good in a corner for this you're good in your double push for this inside push from the made from the glutes and that's why it's not bad to do corner in both direction to improve both your inside push uh, in your uh, in your double push next question from anil i think it's from india tall people bending position and short people bending position is there any difference aerodynamic posture 
Uh, yes, if you are tall or not tall, the main goal, the main goal in technique is the aerodynamic. So it's not a big uh, difference. It's not a big, big difference. Let's, um, I don't know how I can show you this here in scales, but uh, it doesn't make big difference. Of course, if you are tall, you will be less aerodynamic in some way, but uh, not big difference. Like if you are, I don't know if I can simulate this on, uh, no. Um, so not big difference. The main goal is still is to be aerodynamic. So the main goal would be to be able to, to get the shoulders as much as the line as in the line of the hip okay if uh, this is going too much up you are less aerodynamic if this is going more down it's more aerodynamic if one of the best skater for this was Yan Guyadere he was skating almost like this super aerodynamic position and he was quite a small size skater so he was super aerodynamic so that was really uh, the best ratio he could get for this most of the skater will, would be more like this and of course if you are tall then it would make it look like you take more wind, more um, more six. So good question, but not big difference in terms of um, influence. As long as your shoulders are down enough to hide in some way your hip, it's uh, it's quite good. On which leg should your weight be during the corner? Also good question here. And uh, this. I always tell a lot, so there is always a moment. As soon as your left skate land, like from this moment, as soon as the left skate land, I like to have a lot of body weight on the left leg. It's super important to have a lot of body weight on the left leg and much more than on the right leg actually. If you put your body weight on the right leg, you will be more static and like uh, like a not fluid movement in the corner, and it will be very hard to push with the right. But if you can have your body weight on the left leg, that all the good skater they do this. I think maybe on this video we can see it a little bit from this skater. So you see this moment, okay? Everything is on the left leg, and it's. Uh, quite good angle position is doing super good at this moment. So um, that's and he stay quite long. You see, he stay quite long on the left leg with a slow push, and it's making a lot of speed. This this is super important. That's the most important. So I always work more my balance on the um, on the left leg than on the right leg in the corner. I try to do some static balance on the left leg. And I do about 80% of the work time on the left leg and 20% on the right leg when I walk my balance in corner. And I think it's helping a lot uh, to get what uh, this skater was doing here. I think it's a uh, good big star from Netherlands. And very, this balance here, super important. You need to be super good on your left leg. Okay. And it's, uh, it's really one of the basic of the corner. It's uh, something you need to control. So a lot of balance on one leg is needed to be able to cross good. Next question. How to trade my ankle not to go into the wrong angle as you so show in the beginning? So yes, let's go back in this video. So I try to show Alexi where his ankle is kind of breaking and we see it more after i think you speak about this almost this moment here so how to avoid uh, this uncle i try to show for people who arrived late in the video it was this This position compared to uh, I exaggerate a little bit here. So first, it mainly comes from your shoes or from your setting of skate. You have to make sure if your setting is too much outside, then it will break your ankle inside very quick. Okay, so make sure that the frame is inside enough to give some support at this moment. If this is still 
uh, breaking. Try to look at your shoes, okay? Your shoes need to be stiff. If the carbon is a little bit flexible here, it will be super hard to control this. Because then when your foot going, your ankle going in contact with the carbon to get the support, uh, it will be quite um, it will be quite hard. So if the carbon is too soft, then it will flex like this, and it will create like uh, you see on the on the video this problem. If the carbon is stiff enough, then you can push and you have support. So look at your shoes, how stiff it is from the carbon. So it's super important to have this, like the Triple X915 from Slide is a super stiff carbon because of this, because you don't want that the, the ankle crash to the inside like this. So uh, second part you have to look is how wide is uh, the shoes for this. So if it's too wide, you, it's also uh, create this position of falling like this. So you have to look at the material part a lot to solve this problem. If you have a problem with your skate in the setting, I mean side to side or even wedging, and if your shoe is too soft or too big, basically you will have this problem and it's almost impossible to solve it. So you can train as much as you want. If your material is not ready to, to fix it, you will have a crazy trouble to, to fix this. So look at your skate more than your abilities and your skill to fix the technique. If your sh shoes are stiff and close enough and the frame is good and you still have this, look at the wedging really of the setting. If this, this wedging is not good, it can create this problem a lot also. And as soon as you solve this, skate, this uh, material uh, problem or this setting problem, the problem is gone. Okay, It's much more uh, important to invest time in the skate at the moment than trying to solve it by skating. It's super hard this. Okay. Uh, maybe the shape of my foot. <laughs> I think it was, uh, I don't know if it, uh, uh, this next question about left foot. For some reason, I'm more stable. I had a better push and my body bending on the right place when I feel the pressure. Is an inside part of my foot. Is that right? I'm not sure I understand very good your question, Amy Vlogs. Sorry about this. I will read it again. About left foot. For some reason, I'm more stable. So it's quite a good uh, point. It's uh, lucky things. And um, for some reason, when you say this, like post skates, they are never the same. Your foot are also a bit different. Maybe uh, one of your foot is crashing a little more inside than the other. So they are not perfectly regular. So you can do exercise to make the ankle stiffer or try to develop the muscle of your foot, both foot. And uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, the lazy things we don't want to work. We try to work the strength on the quadriceps, on the glutes, we do the big muscle. But working the, mus the small muscle from the foot is also important. So uh, there are some good videos on the internet about some uh, coach or some physio working the muscle from the foot. Uh, basically, you can be on the ground and try to do this with the, the, the foot muscle to try to move a little bit. Uh, try to go and stay on the upper part of your foot and find balance. Uh, there are many little exercises like this to, mus to make the muscle from the foot stronger and it helps uh, to do this. Also, the exercise to work with the angle. That's why I always tell to do some little jump on the skate on one one leg uh, jump or to do slalom because it, it gives uh, more quality in all those muscles and it helps to have better stability on both skates but I also feel that I am more stable on one skate than another it's better if it's on the left skate because it will help in the corner but then you have to try to work on your feeling and develop the little muscle on your foot uh, by doing some agility basically or some, uh, some movement uh, barefoot on the ground um maybe the shape of your foot yeah that's it okay uh let me know if you have some more question about this otherwise it will be a good for this life for today i have maybe i have one more coming is it good to have a bit of um old leg to avoid the knee collapse in one as a girl on the previous video yeah so on the other video we have seen uh one of the skater during straight line, the, the knee was going a lot in the inside like this. 
So, of course, it's always better when you can be, uh, when in your technique, it's you have this line like I show, I try to draw it here again. Well, not very straight. When this line between ankle, knee, hip and shoulder is line, it, it's, a, it's a good advantage. Every time that the knee is going too much inside, it's a problem. Or a little bit outside is not so bad for the double push, actually. So, and it's, you can solve this by the setting, or you can solve this also by some extra muscle work to make the quadriceps or the glutes muscle a little stronger. But uh, it needs some very specific knowledge, I think, with some physio, the physiotherapist, they can help good on this, or some good uh, coach for weightlifting. I think they are good to fix this kind of little uh, position uh, problem with the knee. Uh, it's also something you can work out uh, when you do some squats or some flexion. Some uh, Just look, when you do flexion, if your knee, they are moving like this during the movement. I know the Asiatic people, they are very aware of this and they try when they do uh, squat flexion, they try to make sure that the knee follow the same line during the moment you go down and the moment you go up. And they consider that when the knee is falling in or out during this movement, that uh, it's uh, a weak part of the muscle for the quadriceps, the hamstring or the glutes. So they reinforce a lot the muscle and try to follow a straight line during those movements. I also do this when I do flexion or imitation. I try to make sure that my knee don't move too much. So I, this is something I try to control. How much time should we practice a day? It's a question from India. So let's go a little bit out of the technical part. I, I know that, for example, in India, you, you spend a lot of time on skates and probably too long. I like to have, I personally like to have quite short sessions that are between one hour and one hour 15. Why this is, I like to have short session of one hour, one hour 15 to make sure I can keep my focus on quality and then I'm sure I, I can stay focused very good on my technique during all this time. When I do longer session, two hours or even three hours, like for a training camp, it's okay sometimes. But if it's every day, some two hour session or too long, it's very hard to keep focus on the good quality of the movement all the time. And it could be good on a physical way, but when you trade too long in a long session, then also you, you destroy a bit the, the quality of your technique because you lose some focus, especially at the end of the training, you give up on this focus and you get bad habits in your technique. So instead of training, sometimes you untrain yourself for the right movement. So I recommend a short session, especially for kids. One hour should be enough if it's with very good quality. One hour 15 is okay, but going for two hour session every time, it, create, it could destroy the technique in a long-term process. So make sure uh, that the quality is here. If the skater have a very good focus and he can keep two hours with a good technique quality, then it's okay. But if you lose the focus at the end of the training, you can destroy more your technique than you build it. So it's something uh, I was uh, good in keeping my focus, but for some reason I wanted to make like super perfect. So I always focus on one hour 15, uh, one hour 15 minutes uh, session in my training. Also, uh, because when it was too long, I prefer doing two times one hour 15 than one time three hours. If you had the choice, it's better to, to do it this way. You will basically make your technique better because you have a better focus on this. What should be the position for your arms? I actually, I train a lot and I always stay in my scaler to train a lot with the arms in the back. So for, it's very important uh, to feel the balance. When you use your arms, it's nice because you work on the coordination of it and uh, it's an important part but it's also the arms they are here to hide the unbalanced moment so if you use a lot your arms in the training you will not feel all the mistake you do with your hip and basically you will uh, overdo the shoulders movement and you will if you have your arms always out in the training basically your hip movement will be reduced very quick so i recommend to keep your arms in the back 
so you can feel more the mistake with your hip and more the mistake with your shoulders so it's uh, most important then when you sprint of course uh, you use your arms and at this moment the position uh, i will do a special video like this but let's go for a little tip about the arms i never totally stretch my arms at, in front or at the back and i only do this i flex little more my movement only when my arms is in front at the end of the movement okay during all the rest of the movement let's try to simulate a little bit this all the rest of the movement i try to have not like this but little bit flex and i try to build all the movement from my shoulders and not from my elbow i don't try to do this during the comeback of my arm that's for me that's the biggest problem because it, it then your arms are too early in the timing so you want to keep the arms a little bit flex bring load this position fix and from the shoulders keep the extension the, the angle like this and at the end you can adjust a little bit this movement to make it fit with your with your timing okay so i, I think I, I need to do a special video about this arm movement because it's a i think it's a specific advice i give and not everybody is doing this main mistake people would do is they flex too much the arms uh, during the comeback and uh, the going uh, back of the movement okay uh, we practiced from four to six in the morning in india yes that, that's good also most of the time it's because it's warm i guess in colombia they also practice super early in the morning uh, in europe it's not uh, so much the case we train more about 10 o'clock or after four o'clock but I know the country where the weather can be super warm. Uh, for this reason, it's better to train super early or super late in the evening. Of course, when you uh, but it's the body get used to it. Uh, if you get used to this rhythm, it's no problem. It's a little hard for the coordination in the morning, of course. So it's a little more hard for the technique, but uh, it's still workable. And I know when I go in India or in South America, it's very often that training go very early in the morning. The slide board improves skater technique. How much time, time slide we need to practice to improve technique and posture. So basically the, the slide board, I will use it mainly to correct the position of the skater. Because it's very hard with the slide board to simulate uh, the body weight transfer, uh, especially in the gliding moment. So, but it's a very good tool for the coach because it can be next to the skater to correct the position to make sure he stay aerodynamics it can stay with the right flex uh, so we don't have from the side those kind of movement let's go here I need the X so you can see from the slide board if you have too much of this going up and down and too much of this going up and down and this you don't want many skaters have this problem going up and down with the shoulders and also going up and down with the hip like this. On the slide board, you can work on fixing uh, this part and then having this as a block. And the worst is that both is moving. When the hip is going up and down and the shoulders go up and down, actually you lose, you lose almost all your power. So it's very hard and I see many skaters uh, having this problem. So slide board can be good to try to fix this. Slide board is not good for fixing uh, other parts of the technique i think but it's also very good to give some strength and uh, learn to be in a low position so sprinters would um, be good in doing slide board to learn to accept a longer lower position and uh, for long distance i don't do this so much but it can be useful especially in those days we have no choice we cannot really go uh, train outside so slide board is a good tool to simulate the skating and it can be complemented by some dry land or off skate exercise and good good tools to use a slide board still um, next question motor pace on a track is it very good way to become faster on track and corner especially if you don't have a fast training group that's i i love uh training motor pace okay uh, I was uh, remember when I was in the team with Felix many years ago. I was like the old guy of the team, and he was the the rookie of the team. And uh, we spoke about this, and I told him like my favorite training was actually 
to train over speed. So all behind a group of faster skater, or behind a cyclist, or behind a motorbike. And it's super important training because for less energy, because of the draft behind the motorbike, you can learn to fix your technique at very high speed. And it's the hardest part to do. It's quite hard to reach over 50 km an hour and keep skating good technique. So it's super important. I, I, on the track, it's hard to do. Uh, to uh, the Colombian, I see some video of Colombian skater doing motor pace on the track. It's a little bit dangerous. So you need to have a good driver, good insurance, good condition to make it safe for the skater. And but doing this on straight line, high speed behind a bike or behind a motorbike on some safe road, it's it's a very good. Uh, so I, I, it's something you have to do. It's really helping to improve your speed. If you have a good group, it's better. It's more safe, let's say, to work with a big group on track to create this effect of over speed, and uh, it's more safe for sure. So if you have another group, maybe having a little motorbike, uh, electric bike could be a, a good solution, but still it's not easy to manage. I, I love to do motorbike uh, training on uh, long roads, especially when I was uh, living in Netherlands. It was perfect for this and it gave me a lot of uh, stability at high speed. So very important training. How can we control our bracing while sprinting? Um, basically, I'm not the best to give advice for this, uh, but what I like to do while sprinting or while uh, training, I like to let my body do its bracing by himself. Okay? I don't like to control this part too much. Normally, bracing is, um, is organized by a system from our body that is automatic. <laughs> it is automatic, of course, and, and I like to let my brain let it do it freely. I think my body will find the best solution for myself if I let if I don't want to over control this. So I always uh, let it go by himself. OK, uh, if you focus actually on your breathing, you cannot put your focus on your technique. So I don't think it's a good um, uh, investment. It's better to put some focus on the movement that you are doing than on controlling your breathing uh, when you're sprinting or when you're skating. Next question from Onza. Can you tell us how many hours did you train mentality, um, uh, the mentality of training physically and the attitude of the top sport athlete? Then I had Christophe Odua who teach me mainly how to be professional on skates and so on. So I have the, that was the main coach I had beside the national team. And when I was in the national team for France, I had Charlie Luca mainly and uh, Serge Gardet in those days. So amazing coach. Uh, I didn't try to limit myself also to one coach. It was like, I tried to take the advice from everybody. I tried to listen the opinion from very different people. So nobody is uh, having the true solution or nobody is really wrong in some technique, what's important is that the skater, they have the choice of the athlete, they have the choice to listen to very different people. And from this, they can build their own feeling uh, that are going to work for them. So it needs some uh, responsibility, some autonomy and some uh, and be very curious to take some knowledge from very different people. So don't be afraid to listen to very different opinion and decide what's good for you. Next question from Shipa again, Shilpa. Which place should we accelerate our speed straight pass or in the corner? It's much harder to uh, accelerate in a straight line, actually. So all your speed or most of your speed and acceleration, you want to build it in the corner. So that's why indoor is super important. USC skater, they are very good in acceleration, especially because of the indoor. European skater too. And Colombians, they built a lot during the corner. One rule I have when I go in a corner, I won't always want to go out of the corner faster than I get into the corner. If you can build your speed during the corner, it gives you the opportunity to relax more in the straight. So you will save much more energy. So I like to do my straight line more relaxed, maintain the speed by the technique and by the body weight transfer, relax. I would lose a little bit of speed probably at the entry of the corner. Make the first half of the corner a little more easy, but as soon as I pass the apex of the corner, I want to be in an acceleration moment 
till the end of the corner. So for sure, no doubt about this, you want to build your speed into the corner. And I think uh, that was uh, quite enough, already 50 minutes of this live for this video. Thanks for people following uh, this live and asking a question. I will try to do some more uh, during the week and of course during the weekend. Feel free to go look at some older video about the technique, some video about the double push. Now at the moment, uh, I did a lot about the straight line. I did a lot about the double push. I will focus a little bit more in the corner in my next video. So that's why I recreate a little bit this animation of my skater, but I still need to work on it because they still have some technical problem I need to solve. I have a little uh, strange mo movement uh, sometime. So I will try to, to fix this uh, sooner or later. Thank you for following the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Like always, I try to invite you to follow uh, the channel of Felix Ryanen or Power Slide also. And see you later in the week for some more video. Thank you. Bye bye.